Now, in addition to this, there are various tools which are available for the interpretation of the tax treaty. And the first and the most prominent amongst them is the Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties. Now, this is one of the most prominently used and one of the most detailed law, Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties, which provides as to how international agreements, including tax agreements, can be interpreted. This is not exclusively for double taxation avoidance agreement, but it contains certain principles as to if there is a treaty between two countries and that has to be interpreted how it should be done. We are going to see more on the Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties in the subsequent slides. The second is the definitions in a treaty. Now, every treaty in Article 3 contains certain definitions. And generally, at the end, Article 3 also provides that the terms which are not defined in the treaty can be referred to by the domestic tax laws if a definition for this is given there. So when interpreting treaty and trying to see what a particular word means, one should look at the Article 3. If the word is defined here, nothing like it. If the word is not defined here, but this mentions that one can make a reference to the domestic tax laws, that's what one should look out for. Protocols to the treaty. Now, protocol to the treaty is something that, let's say if you enter into a tax treaty in 2000 and then there's a change in law or there's a requirement that certain provisions require additional clarification, the two countries can actually get together and clarify the meaning of those terms or replace some of the existing provisions of the treaty by adding protocols. And these protocol can then be amended from time to time. So instead of amending the whole treaty, there is a protocol which is kind of an annexure or an amendment document to the main treaty. Memorandum of understanding between contracting parties. Now this may not necessarily be there in all the treaties, but there are certain MOUs which are issued by countries who enter into tax treaty at the time of entering into them. The OECD and the UN model commentaries. Now it is but obvious that uh, because most of the countries use OECD model tax treaty or the UN model tax treaty as a basis or the starting point for entering into tax treaties, large part of the text of the treaties actually resemble to the OECD model tax convention or the UN model tax convention. Therefore, the interpretation or the explanation placed by these, which is OECD model commentary as well as the UN model commentary are one of the swiftest and the easiest and the most authentic application as to how treaty should be amended. Now, here I want to point out one particular thing. Like I mentioned in the beginning, there could be a difference between a standard draft like the OECD model tax convention and the actual treaty entered into between two great states. If there is a change in the language or if the change has been interpreted by the domestic courts in a different manner, that is something which should be applied compared to the actual OECD model commentary. Then there can be technical explanations to a particular treaty. So let's say, for example, uh, you know, some of the treaties that US has entered into, there are technical explanations as to how, what those means. 